Okay. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mr. Kaw and today we'll be looking at Form 4, Chapter 3, Biology, the subtopic of osmosis. Okay, osmosis. Huh? So if you are my regular student, you know that I mention this a lot. Every processes, huh? every process, huh? whether simple diffusion, resapan ringkas, facilitated diffusion, resapan berbantu, osmosis or active transport, all have its own confusion. Yeah, all have its own confusion. So today I will make sure you have no issues with osmosis. So let's get right into it. Huh? Now, guys, first thing to understand for osmosis would be the three main types of solution. The three main types of solution include hypotonic hypertonic as well as isotonic guys these three types of solution eh? to understand what is uh, hypo and hyper in exam normally they'll give you two concentration of solution okay dual keperkatan berbeza eh? so like for instance here we have a 0.1 mole sucrose solution as well as a 1 mole sucrose solution now, whenever you see two different concentration or even three different concentration of solutions, your job is to first determine which is hypotonic, which is hyper. Mana satu hypo, mana satu hyper. And once you know that, your job becomes very simple. You just need to remember water always moves from hypotonic solution to hypertonic solution. So, the biggest issue for students would be the very first part. Especially when they give you three different solutions. Okay, bila ada tiga larutan yang mempunyai uh, kepekatan berbeza, so pelajar akan menjadi kelam kabut. Eh? Straight to the point. So, based on our two solutions here, Guys, sucrose is considered a solute. Okay, solute means bahan larut. Bahan larut, something that can dissolve in a solvent. Something that can dissolve in a solvent. Eh? And guys, can you look at the two tanks here? So, does one more sucrose solution have more sucrose or solute? Or the 0.1 mole have uh, more sucrose, or, or we call it solute lah. Obviously, one mole, guys. You can see there are more solute in one mole sucrose solution, and therefore we call this left hand side solution here a hypertonic solution, guys. Hypertonic solution, okay. And if you know that 1 mole is hyper, 0 0.1 mole, guys, 0 0.1 mole will automatically be a hypotonic solution. Okay? So, when, when you answer exam question right, as long as you know between 0 to 20, which is a bigger number, Okay, I always tell my students, as long as you know how to count 0 to 10, 0 to 20, you know which one is a bigger number. Then that one is a hypertonic solution. Okay? But very funny, always got students tell me, Sir, I do not know how to count. So that's why I have to recommend some standard 1 max class for them. Huh? So, uh, for example here, guys, 0 0.1 more and 1 more. 1 is obviously bigger compared to 0 0.1 and therefore, this is the hypertonic solution. So, whenever it comes to a few different concentration of solution, for example, guys, I just show you a few numbers like as simple as 1, 2, 3. Okay? Or I just compare like, 1 and 3. So, guys, which one is a hypertonic solution? Obviously, the 3 mole is hyper, and when 3 mole is hyper, automatically 1 mole is hypo. Okay, 1 mole is hypo. So, 
so basically coming back to what I told you, uh, the first step is to determine which one is hyper, which one is hypo. Then step two, water always move from hypo to hyper, correct? The issue is this, guys. The issue with osmosis is this. Uh, because different books, they write the definition. Because they write the definition a little bit differently. For example, guys, for example, uh, uh, students will ask me this, uh, Sir, why a uh, hypertonic solution, some books, uh, they put low concentration. I don't understand, sir. Why uh, uh, my teacher taught me, like, like how you teach us, is high concentration. But here, some books, uh, they write low concentration. Kepekatan yang rendah. Uh, guys, do you have the answer? So, if you have the answer, but trust me, uh, um, I've been teaching for more than 10 years. Uh, basically, even Form 5 students, uh, I think I dare to say this, uh, 60 to 70% at this point in time, beginning of the year, you are still uncertain. Okay? You are still uncertain. Put high chatting, uh, as in which one is, uh, which is which, what's the problem? Okay, so this is the issue, this is the main issue that students have as far as osmosis definition is concerned. So guys, I want you to take note of just one, one container, okay, one beaker here. If, if I tell you now, hypertonic, larutan hyper, higher concentration of solute. It can also be, I add in another term, lower concentration of, can you please fill in the blank? So this is the point whereby most Form 5 students are able to answer. Okay, most Form 5 students are able to answer. But Form 4 might struggle a little bit because um, beginning of the year, you are just starting to get to know what biology is all about, okay? So, guys, do you have the answer? The answer is, when, when we talk about hypertonic, high concentration of solute, low concentration of water, okay? Low concentration of water. So this is why some books put for hypertonic, some books they put hyper, uh, sorry, higher concentration, some books they put lower concentration because they are either referring to water or solute. So guys, be very careful. Uh, it, can be, it can be either one. There's nothing wrong. It's perfectly fine. I'll throw you one example later. One example that... Confirm all of you know, 100% of you know, okay? So, if we know hyper, we also automatically know hypo. Guys, hypo, lower concentration of solute, higher concentration of water. Does it make sense? Look, a lot of solute for the same amount of space. Bagi ruang yang tetap, bagi ruang yang mala. If got more sucrose, means got less water but for the same amount of space if got less solute guys automatically means more water and the example that i want to share with you is this huh? uh, besides water can you tell me a drink that every one of you have tasted before every one of you have tasted before uh, I was just teaching this in my lesson the other day. Um, Cause students say, uh, "Teh ice, teh ice lah, hundred plus lah, huh? Coca Cola lah." I think soft drink quite true lah. But the example that I really want, okay, let me draw two cups. Let me draw two cups here. Okay, one cup on the left. Okay, one on the right. Uh, supposed to be same size so you have to imagine uh, a bit of imagination involved uh. okay guys let's say these two uh, are of the same size let's say these two cups are of the same size 
Now, the drink that I want to talk about is actually Milo. Guys, Milo. Because why? I'm sure if you... I'm sure from young, uh, you have been exposed to this drink called Milo because Nestle is very smart. Guys, remember when you were, what, standard one? Your teacher suddenly gave you a coupon. Yeah, then your, then your teacher said, hey, please bring the coupon during sports day to collect a free drink. So guys, you happily bring your coupon during the Hari Sukan and you line up, you line up, the, the Milo truck comes in, boom, 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 boom. The Milo truck comes in, then you line up, you give the coupon, you collect uh, a small cup of cold Milo, ice Milo. And guys, the moment you tasted the Milo, it's the best drink you ever had for in your life because you were only seven years old. You only had water, milk, and number three is Milo. I don't think your parents let you drink soft drink uh, at seven years old unless you truly, truly drink. Lah. So guys, Milo at that point in time would be the best drink for most of you, not everybody, but for most of you. Okay? And then you ask your mom, oh, hey, can we buy Milo? Uh, it's really a nice drink. And most parents will buy. Okay, so guys, coming back to this. Uh, Milo, when you first buy it, human, we are like that. When we have something new, okay, when we ha have something new, when we have a lot of something, we tend to put more. Wow, guys, first day getting the Milo tin back, a new tin of Milo. You got really excited. You put half cup. You put half cup of Milo. Guys, half cup of Milo. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> Confirm sore throat. Uh. Confirm sore throat. Then, okay. Then, we put hot water. Ah, guys. Okay, hot water. Now, human, we are also like that in a sense. When let's say your Milo, your Milo, your first tin of Milo is about to finish, then your mom realized, hey, you drink so fast, I don't want to buy, uh, I don't want to buy today, I want to buy it next week, at least drag a little, a little while longer. So guys, that little bit of Milo in your tin had to last for the next one week. So what do you do? You become very kiam siap, very kedekut with the powder. Wow, well, guys, put a little bit just to get the, just to get the taste. But still, you are very stubborn. You want a full cup of drink so that because you're always hungry. Ah, guys. Okay, see, to color so not easy. Uh, okay, so this one here. All right. So, guys, now, I'll just label. Uh, so, this is Milo. This is basically Milo. And on the other hand, this is water. Okay, water, the amount of water. I think to make sure you see the comparison, I use this symbol. Huh? Okay. Guys, so we have two cups here. Terdapat dua cawan. Huh? Okay, you uh, A and B. Which one is hypertonic? Obviously, answer would be A. Because... A hypertonic solution, a hypertonic solution means it has a lot of solute. In this scenario, Milo is the solute. A lot of solute and less water. A lot of solute, less water. Okay? Whereas for B, guys, B here would be a hypo, hypotonic this would be a hypotonic solution. Uh, why? Common sense will tell you guys. Less solute, but a lot of water. Okay? Less solute, but a lot of water. Right? So, if you feel this example is able to help you out, guys, uh, you can probably draw this somewhere. I mean, you can draw on your, on whatever notes you normally use, uh. Whenever you study bio, it's good to have two types of notes. One, textbook aside. Guys, textbook aside. Huh? Because love it or hate it, you will definitely have a textbook. 
I recommend that if you do study, if you do study on your own, okay, no, if you follow a tuition teacher, guys, if you follow a tuition teacher, like if you, for example, you follow me, you have my notes, that should be your main book. Because uh, if you have seen my notes, uh, yeah, okay, I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab my book. Okay, guys, uh, so for example, uh, Okay, for example, uh, this is my notes. Uh, example, uh. so normally for my notes, I like to I like to print single sided. Uh, yes, it's not um, it's not good for space utilization, but it's very good for students to do revision. I always tell my students um, what we learn is here, but guys, this is bio. This is a science. There's no end to certain things, one. So. The empty space uh, is for you to jot down whatever extra information or important stuff that you want to remember. So guys, you must have, I call it, uh, I call it a, a main book to revise, a main revision book, uh, a main book for revision. You must have Okay, so you must have a main book for revision, whereby this is to study for your exam. And finally, one more, guys, one more. Uh, it's good to have one reference book. Okay, it's good to have one reference book because reference book, what do we call it in Malay? What do we call it in Mandarin? We call Chan Kao Su. Chan Kao Su means Buku Rujukan. Buku Rujukan. Uh, not buku hafalan. I am. This is a personal opinion, but I am quite against students memorizing the reference book because the reference book has too much information for you to memorize for exam. Because I'm taking into account the fact that you have nine subjects, you have ten subjects. Some of you probably you were like me. I took eleven subjects in SPM. Yeah. So definitely, reference book is not for you to memorize guys this is my advice lah, but of course you know what's best for you huh? so um yeah so when you study right uh let's say if you are following a certain teacher you can use a main book if not you can create your own you can create your own okay you can take a simple notebook then add in extra details lah. guys can be any book lah, but best not to be a reference book okay all right so this is part one of osmosis um i don't like my videos to be too long so if you feel that you want to continue to learn you can watch part two okay guys part two of osmosis i'll teach you about how water move how exam they can ask you and also how to answer if they ask you a certain type of osmosis question okay guys uh, cheers i'll see you in the next video Thank you.